So I'm joined uh, by Paul Somerville in studio this morning, who is a financial analyst. Um, I don't mean to be in any way disparaging of other people's knowledge, but can we just go through this? We're in a very, very bad place. And all those highfalutin choices that we would like as to be a proper and a caring and a decent society now seem to be superseded by money. But explain the money and why it is so urgent. Well, very simply, uh, you know, we're not running out of compassion, as Colin McCarthy said, we're running out of money. So very clearly what happened in the bond market this week is very, very important for everybody to understand. The bond market actually shut Ireland out of the borrowing markets at the moment. By, you know, everyone Did we not opt out? No. First of all, the headline rates on our yields in the bond market went up to a place where Ireland would be unable to borrow in the future. Now, if we were having a bond auction next week, we would be unable to borrow, we would be going to the ECB, and we would be in the stability fund. Okay, now, can I just ask you a question? Sure. We would be going to the bond market next week. What do we do when we're going to the bond market? Okay, well, basically, the NTMA has to borrow money for the, the economy. The National Treasury yes. Management, yes. So uh, what they have done for the year 2010 is they've pre-borrowed. So they've borrowed more than we are spending at the moment. And that's why we don't need to go to the bond markets at the moment, but we will have to go back soon. So originally they thought uh, the start of January at some point, but now I would say that it uh, you know, could be as late as uh, end of February. But at some point we need to have a bond auction. And, and bo- uh, auctioning a bond, how do you do that? It means we are borrowing money. Okay, basically what happens is we go to the marketplace, we issue bonds, we hope that they will buy them off us at a certain And that's a piece of paper which says I will lend you money and you promise to pay me the money back over a period of time at such a rate. Exactly. And what is important now with the bond markets is they're not fearful of the rates of interest, they're fearful of getting their money back at all. That is the main fear. When you think about Greece, you know, I talked about this before. It started with Dubai last year. Then it was on to Greece, the dominoes, and we are the next domino. And that is the very important thing. The markets have absolutely no confidence in this government and the strategy. You know, don't forget, it was only uh, eight weeks ago, Brian Cowan came up when the bond yields were at 6% and said it was just a normal ebb and flow of the markets. Then uh, Brian Lennon came out and said, well, you know, it's, it's a temporary issue. Eamon O'Queeve came out and said it's just a blip. That's eight weeks ago. They also said, well, you know, when... Uh, the numbers come out for Anglo-Irish Bank, the bond markets will be will calm down. Of course they won't calm down because the bond markets have absolutely lost all faith in this government's credibility. Every number that they've come out with has been over-optimistic. Every, uh, every number? Absolutely. Every single thing that Brian Lennon has said to the bond markets has been either factually incorrect or over-optimistic. And the bond markets have run out of patience. So, you know, Brian Lennon was hilarious this week because he said it was uh, the reason our bond yields have gone up is because the comments out of Germany. It's nothing to do with comments out of well, Germany. Well, she wasn't helpful. No. It's not sorry, the, remind us what Angela okay, Merkel sorry, said. It's, it's, she is trying to put in place what we should have put in place two years ago with our banks. She is fearful that countries are not going to be able to pay back bonds just like the bond markets are. So she is trying to put in place from 2013 onwards a way that Germany does not have to pay the debts of every single person. So she is doing the right things for Germany. So it's not her comments. It's the realisation by the bond markets and herself that some countries will not be able to pay back their debts. And Ireland is one of those countries. So it's not her comments that are the problem. It's it's the way we have mismanaged well, the economy is the problem. I, I, I can, the way we have mismanaged our economy. But I can hear Brian Lenehan and Brian Cowan saying, what's with this negativity? We're working towards a plan. We're getting there. All these people saying it's a disaster isn't helping us. But if the bond markets don't believe the two Brian's, there's a possibility that the people in Ireland don't believe them either. Well, they shouldn't believe them because every single thing, as I say, has been wrong. For an example, you know, Brian Lennon made a, a statement maybe four or five weeks ago when, uh, about the money that needed for AIB Bank, when every single independent analyst has been going on for over a year that his numbers were absolutely incorrect. He said no, he was correct, and then obviously he had to backtrack and say no, AIB needs $10.4 billion. Why? Why did that happen? The reason- I presume the man was not lying. Well, I wouldn't like to say he's lying, but he's obviously misinformed or obviously, I, you know, I don't want to uh, slag him off personally, but it was obvious to most independent analysts that his numbers were over-optimistic. Okay, that's the best I can say. So the following day, here's a very good example of what happens, to why the bond markets are really scared about Ireland at the moment. Brian Lennon did a conference call with Citibank, you know, this infamous conference call where the monkey chants were and things like that. So that bit isn't important. But what happened was somebody from the bond market stood up from, uh, right from the city of London and asked Brian Lennon directly, will there be a run on the Irish banks if you cancel the bond auctions? Brian Lennon's answer was, Ireland is an island. 
That was his answer. Now, you can't have a Minister for Finance lecturing the bond markets with answers like that. They just th think we're absolutely not credible. And that's why the confidence of the bond markets is completely and utterly eroded in what Brian Lennon is doing and what Brian Cowan is doing. What we would need... You know, we have a window of opportunity here in the next three months to get our house in order or we are in the stability pact. That's it. So what we need to do is we need to have a general election. This is the absolute crucial time to have an election. And but the does that not give an appearance of instability? No. The reason being is because whoever gets into power right, will have a mandate from the people to be able to push through very, very difficult budgetary cuts. There will be a four to six year plan and the bond markets like certainty. So we would hopefully have this election before we have to go back to the bond markets and then we've got a chance. Then we've got a chance to put in all the other things we want to do. I know you're going to be discussing them later, yeah. how, we w how we see our society going in the yeah. next couple of years. Because again, we're not going to be given that chance unless we do something radical yeah, now. Can I just ask you a question? If a person runs into difficulty uh, paying their mortgage, the advice is go in and talk to them. If your loan is over 15 or 20 years, extend it and you might be able to afford your repayments. Why do we have to go for this four-year uh, d deadline? I mean, would they not think it reasonable if we did a six-year plan? which would give the possibility of growth within our own economy and we wouldn't have to savage our own people. Okay, there's two different things. What uh, the markets and the people who lend us money are very worried about is the structural problems in Ireland. It doesn't matter if it's four years or six years. We have to be able to tackle you know, the sheltered domestic economy and the overinflated salaries, every w the way the economy works. So the plan has to be credible. They would go for a four-year plan. They would go for a six-year plan, so long as they believe the team in place is able to enact that plan. Basically, these guys just want their money back. It's very simple. Yeah, they now, they're, they're regarded as the big bad people out there. People say, why, why the hell do we... We have to count out to bond, uh, to bond markets. But I gather that they are like a pension investment and that kind of thing. Yeah, well, there's all different types. But again, why we have to count out to them at the moment is because we, to run the economy, we, ha we have to borrow money off them. It's very, very simple. And l these guys have lots of different uh, bonds to invest in. They don't have to invest in Ireland. You know, during the week, there was at least three different countries said, now we are not touching Ireland again in the bond markets. That, you know, Who said the, that? The Russians said it. The Chileans said it. They said their funds are not going to be investing in Ireland in Irish bonds. Then the London Clearinghouse, this again is very important, which is when you trade a bond, you need to put a deposit down somewhere. Right. So you need to put a deposit down the London Clearinghouse. The London Clearinghouse raised the amount of money you need to deposit to actually even trade Irish bonds. So again, for a bond trader, he's not going to touch Ireland. How, well, it would be more expensive for him to trade. To trade Irish bonds than someone else's Why? bonds. Why? Because they perceive the risk of us not paying back our bonds is higher. So, you know, for a bond trader, they go, oh, well, okay, just let Ireland sort its own problems out. I won't be trading Irish bonds in the next year or two. So, again, we have a window of opportunity in the next three months to get our house in order. But it's very, very important to understand that the markets need clarity. And every single fact that has come out of the government has been wrong. And that is very, very important. There is no confidence in any of the numbers that are coming out. So, for an example, if you have a Minister for Finance that has signed the Crow Park Agreement, and then comes out and says he's making 15 billion of cuts. That is not a plausible stance. We would have to go back and revisit the Crow Park Agreement. That is very, very clear. Then we'll have people out on the streets. Well, you might have people out on the street, but this is what I would have to say you have to do. You go to the head guys who are supposed to be implementing the Crow Park Agreement, you slash their salaries by 60%. And Jeepers. And you say to them, well, this is what is going to happen if we run out of money. And you say to them, if you do not implement uh, these, what, what we're saying for the Irish people, then you're going to be fired or, or you're not getting any, any more money. This is the radical stuff we need to do because in Ireland we're great at writing reports. We wrote the uh, on, on, on uh, board Snip Newer report, still sitting on a desk, hasn't been implemented. We think something about writing reports and making announcements is something about changing the structure of the economy. We haven't done the hard decisions, even though I know our government keeps telling us we have. We have not taken the hard, you know, we still haven't sorted out our, our banks. Two years later, the banking situation is still as bad as it was. Brian Lennon two years ago said we'd have to get in outsiders to run our banks. It's, what happened? We put in an insider to run AIB. What happened? A year and a half later, it's a disgrace. And now we've just had to put in an outsider a year and a half too late to run the banks. You know, we could have been restructuring our banks a year and a half ago. We chose not to do it. We chose the easy options and we failed.